Hey everyone, how we doing today? See the boat, I'm in a standard chair today. I decided to come out today and just use some live bait. Something I haven't done in a long time out here. And uh, I'm gonna show you the strategy I use in the skiff to optimize my presentation, my hook sets, everything. Using a spinning tackle and live bait, as you can see right here. I got a couple of some flow trolls. Just your inexpensive uh, little floating live wells. I've got two of them out there. I got about a dozen pinfish in each one. I got bigger ones in one, smaller ones in the other. I find that to be the best, most efficient way of hauling live bait, as long as uh, the bait is uh, suitable for that type of environment. Pinfish happens to be one of them that's very suitable. And um, that way, you know when they're done, I just put them in the compartments. I don't have to worry about dragging anything or anything cluttering the deck. And uh, on my spinning gear, I have bait runners. That's what these reels are called. You have two drags, your main drag, and then a free spool drag, but it's adjustable so you can set the tension. I love using these for live bait, and I'll explain once I cast out and everything what I do. And the way I position the rod, rod positioning is everything. And I'll explain that a little bit too. Um, these bait runners allow me to position these rods on the boat in a way that's extremely flexible so that when the boat moves and shifts in the wind, it's really easy to change the trajectory of the tip of that rod to the bait, eliminating that slack and that bow against the wind. And that goes a long way to uh, detecting the bite and making a really good hook set. So I think this is going to be good. Stay tuned. I'm going to park in a little bit and we'll get started. our first fish of the day. Rip that uh, pinfish that I cut in half. I haven't been, uh, that was the first cast. I mean, I haven't been out here more than a couple minutes. This feels like a nice redfish to me. Yep. We're going to reel this rod in. First, we're going to go over this rod. Keep the tension on the one in the left hand while I reel with the one in the right. Oh man, he really had a lot of line out there. There we go. Okay, now we got that rod in. I can focus on this fish. That's a big red. Big monster redfish. Good God. This 
goes to show you, I mean, when you're fishing uh, artificials, you'll probably, it's more rewarding. You, that's why I haven't done this in a couple years. It's always more rewarding to uh, fish artificials because you're always moving, you're in the hunt. But you don't catch as big a fish as you do when you use bait. Generally, caught my share of big uh, fish on uh, artificials, but you tend to always get the slobs when you're soaking a bait. Well, this will officially be my biggest red of the year right here, by a long shot. set perfectly on this. The one thing it's great to see a big old redfish out here. First time I've seen him this year. See, but now I'm left with the thought of, uh, God, if I would have came out here and just used artificials, would I have been crashing on big reds? I don't know. We got a great hook set right in the corner of the mouth. Right, grab by the tail and get him in the boat. Beautiful red right there. Wow. About 30 inches. 30 inch redfish. Oh, don't make me get the pliers. Nice. Well, that is one healthy. Great shape, it's gonna be a beautiful release. Goes. Well, that was awesome. So glad I decided to come out today. I was like, you know what? I haven't been out here using bait in so long. Let me make a video. I think the last video that I, uh, I made while I was using bait was when we went to the East Coast and caught those giant pole reds, so. That was just, uh, that was great to see. So anyway, let me tell you a little bit more about what I just did now that we got the fishing out of the way. This is my rod. This is my heavier of the two rods that I, I like to use. So when I live bait on the skiff, I like to throw two rods, two in each different direction. This one, I have rigged both a 30 pound test braid, but I have rigged this one with some, uh, about three and a half feet of a 25 pound fluorocarbon and a 2-0 owner hook. And then on this one, it's my slightly heavier, it's a slightly heavier rod, same reel, 30 pound, but I also have 30 pound fluoro and a 3-0 on our live bait hook. Okay, about three and a half feet. And so this one's just a little bit of a heavier rig than that rig. That way, I usually have two different sizes of bait. I'm putting the bigger baits or a big piece of dead bait on this rod. And the little frisky ones are going on a little bit of a lighter rod. And uh, that way you're covering both bases. And that's what having two rods out is all about, you know. Um, it's doubling my chances of catching a fish pretty much. And I'm just out here relaxing, so I might as well have two rods out. Now the bait runner really comes into play. Let me cast this one out and I'll just play in a little bit. Make sure my drag's right. Let's go throw this guy out real quick. Okay. Once that's out, I'll tighten it a little bit, just so I see that right now with the wind, I got a bow in the line, but that bow's wiggling. I know that my line tension is just about perfect. I don't really need to tighten it too much more. I want the bait out as far as I can. Now I click the bait runner on. You'll see how easy the line's coming out, but it makes that clicking noise. So now another thing I always do is I put the reel right about to there, to that position, so it's the further, furthest away. That way, when I put it down. My reel is well off the ground, so I know it's not going to drag on the boat or anything. It's going to be sitting really nice like this. It's going to lift that line up over any cleats or anything like that. And that's the way I like to set it. So I've got my bait out there, and just what happened on that last fish, something comes around and grabs that bait, I'm going to hear it. 
fish doesn't know it yet because it's so light the drag is so light fish has no idea I click down once I feel a little bit of tension set the hook game on extremely enjoyable okay so this is my little bit of a heavier rod so that was my small pinfish rod so now I'll go to this bait bucket which has a larger pinfish select something Okay, we'll go with this guy right here. And I'm gonna do the same thing I did to the last one, which was I cut the tail off the pinfish. I know that sounds cruel, but you can see that the, that just produced that 30 inch red. So um, I hook it through the forehead here, okay? Come down here, grab my knife. And I just cut right from about the, where it does its business. Straight up or on a on an angle, really doesn't matter. See, I got blood on the boat. It's one thing I don't tolerate. So I will be washing that off in a second. I was a lot more careful last time, but this time I failed. Anyway, so that one I went straight out. This one I'm going to go straight out this way. As you can see, there's a ton of bait around me. Now that bait, his tail cut off. He's swimming right now. And he's just, and that scent is just flowing everywhere as he's struggling down there. And that's what draws the, the bigger fish in. So I'm going to get this blood here off the deck because that's the worst thing as far as staying in the boat, dry blood. I'd like to get that off the boat. Oh, fish on. We got him. He hit the smaller pinfish this time as I was trying to wash the boat. Another big red.